So we went for a walk and mum got some beautiful flowers. There's a lot of natives in there too, I think. The yeah, bottle brush. Yeah. What else? There's geraniums. Which one's a geranium? These ones. The pink That's ones? Geranium. Yeah. And I think this one is a rambling rose. That's beautiful. Yeah, it is beautiful. And mum, of course, got some thistles. Yes, so we can have green so smoothie. Woohoo! Good bread <laughs> thistles. Yeah, and I got this. This is isn't milk this thistles. Very good for you. Milk thistles. Yeah. And, you know, as long as they don't have Monsanto Roundup on them, they are good. There we go. Got this beautiful. What is it, Mum? I think it's a rambling rose. Rambling rose. I'm not positive, but it's amazing. It's like what you see at weddings. Only it's made by nature, not humans. The green goddess is going in. Yummy. Look what Mama Duck got me. This is so cool. This is a water filter. In case, oh, well, it's not a water filter. It just holds the water. You get to put the water in there. You put the lid back on. And then you've got a pineapple. In Thailand, they call it sapalot. Okay, so something I like to do before I have the main event, sometimes I do this, is have a Dr. McDougall noodle soup. Check out these noodles. I used to have this when I was young, like um, the two-minute noodles. Remember that, Mum? Yes, I do. I so love them a lot. And so these, this is really good. And you can regulate the amount of salt you put in it. I only put like a quarter of one of these sachets. So that's really cool. And I actually just burnt my hand. Burnt my hand, pouring boiling water into this, but I poured it on my hand, so it was a bit silly. But we've got some aloe vera here. Mum went hunting down the street, found some aloe vera, which is excellent for burns, isn't it, Mum? It is. The best thing. Really, really good. Mum's had some major burns, haven't you? Yeah, I have. From cooking. Um, and ironing. <laughs> yeah. So that's it. Well, I'm going to get into this. Mum's going to make a curry and a honey. Okay, Mum's made this beautiful curry. She learnt to make it, actually, in Thailand. And we have some brown rice. This is going to be beautiful. Let's serve it up. Yes. Mm -hmm. Okay, so I'm busy... Um, Peeing, peeing, peeing my burn. Got the frozen peas on the burn. <laughs> it's not too bad. It's pretty good. And we just watched this awesome video from Joe about starvation and what it does to your metabolism and your weight. So you definitely got to check it out after this video. I'm going to attach it on the end. So please watch it. If you have ever dieted in your life, you have to watch this. Okay? Okay. 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 <laughs> and that's it. Okay. Yeah, we had our curry. That was very nice. Mm -hmm. We had a curry and a honey. And another day of fun tomorrow with mum. Yeah. So don't forget to go fruit yourself. Oh, fruit yourself. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and we'll see you tomorrow. So it's called actually the biology of human starvation. And it was a study done by uh, Ansel Benjamin Keyes, who's a very well-known scientist, researcher of the time in the 50s, um, and in the University of Minneapolis. So <clears throat> it's called the Minnesota Starvation Experiment. That's the actual um, document uh, study. Um, anyway, let's go on. So the Minnesota Starvation Experiment was a clinical study performed at University of Minnesota in the, in, in the 50s. And it was basically an investigation designed to determine the psychological and, and uh, physiological effects of uh, severe and prolonged dietary restriction, basically dieting. They, they were doing it for, as a war effort to work out how to refeed Europe, but the implications is that it's useful for us today. And that's basically what, what, it, what it says here. It was a semi-starvation uh, subject on healthy men over a 12 month period. And there were four phases, which um, are really clear. The controlled period um, was basically 3,200 calories and the semi-starvation period, don't know what does that. Semi-starvation period was um, 24 weeks, and they had 1,500 calories, which is just about where, where where diets head towards, right? In fact, many diets go below that, so they were calling this severe starvation, 1,500 calories. Bear that in mind. Um, then they had a rehabilitation period and they were each given different diets so we're trying to work out what's the best way to refeed and then the final rehabilitation was an unrestricted food intake so you could eat whatever you wanted to um, and as I said it was really looking at the, the dieting for the model 
modern day, even though it was designed as a war effort. Because as it says here, our bodies can't tell the difference if they're being uh, starved involuntarily, like the war victims, or voluntarily. It does not have any idea. And as I said, it was very controlled. The men lived in the lab and they did daily exercise walking about three miles. So imagine in your life, how many times have you gone on a, a, a daily exercise regime and combined it with a low calorie intake in order to lose weight? If you've done that, then you are part of this experiment and what you discover here applies to you. So, um, they chronicled what the men did and uh, the men lost 10% of their uh, strength and they lock, their physical endurance dropped by half. So that's the first thing that happens is that you become weak and tired. So that's, that's uh, what you may have experienced on a diet in the past. Their metabolic rates declined by 40% and their heart volume shrank by 12%. Remember, this is only three months. This is a three month program. How many diets have you done and for how long? Uh, pulse is slow, temperatures drop, they complained of feeling cold, tired, hungry, been there, done that, having trouble concentrating, impaired judgment and comprehension, dizzy spells, visual disturbances, ringing in the ears, tingling, numbing of the extremities, stomach aches, body aches, headaches, trouble sleeping, hair thinning and their skin growing that dry and thin, their sexual function and test size were reduced, they lost all interest in sex, they have every physical indication of accelerated aging. Three months on a 1500 calorie diet. But the psychological changes were brought on by the diet, even among the most robust men with moderate calorie restrictions were the most profound. Dr. Keyes called it semi-starvation neurosis. The men became nervous, anxious, apathetic, withdrawn, impatient, self-critical and distorted body images, even feeling overweight, moody, emotional and depressed. So they felt fat even though, and depressed even though, they, even though they were under eating. A few even mutilated themselves. So anyone done self-harming during your dietary processes? They lost ambition and, and feelings of ad adequacy, adequacy. They neglected their appearance, became loners. They lost their sense of human humour and love. I, I, I've done that one. I've done the, like, the loaning thing for sure. Um, it's pretty hard for me to lose my sense of humour though, I've got to say. Instead, they became obsessed with food. Been there, done that. Thinking, talking, reading about it constantly. I still am. Developed weird rituals. Uh, yeah, I guess so begun hoarding things, consumed vast amounts of coffee, tea, chewed gum incessantly. Binge eating ep episodes also became a problem. That was one which was particularly powerful for me. The act of restricting food and the constant hunger make, made food the most important thing in one's life, said one of the participants. These experiences are similar to those who've spent their lives dieting. Many of the symptoms once thought to be features of anorexia nervosa are actually normal biological responses of undernutrition and restriction. So all of this stuff that we think is mental, that we think is, is us, that's a personality flaw, is just the basic biological response of undernutrition, or the depression, or the doubt, or the hoarding, or the binging, or the starvation, or the thinking that you're fat when you're skinny, um, withdrawing, isolation, you name it. You name it, these people who were tested for a benchmark period to, to see that they were psychologically sound developed all of these symptoms once the calories were reduced. The aftermath. So when the men were allowed to eat as much as they want, they had insatiable appetites and never felt full. Now who's, who's been there? I've seen people mention that in the Raw Till 4 forum and the 801010 forum and all these other places. I'm eating everything and I can't feel full. Even five months later, five months later, some continued to have dysfunctional eating, though most were finally regaining some normalization of their eating. Now, I haven't got the study with me right now, but there's an article that I read recently by, by a nutritionist that also involved in this study, and it showed that um, after starvation diets, your hormones that control your hunger and appetite can be out of whack for up to a year later. So you do like a, a four-week diet, and, and for a year you're hungry. And, and I, this has happened to me. And you can't feel full no matter how much you eat. They regain their weights. 
they suppressed metabolism, returned, uh, yet none of the men had regained the total form of physical capacity. And while it seemed the men were overeating, oh, I'm eating so much, I'm eating so much, Dr. Key said their bodies needed an order amount of calories for their tissues to be rebuilt. Our experiments have shown that in an adult man, no appreciable rehabilitation can take place on a diet of 2,000 calories a day. The proper level is more like 4,000 calories daily for some months. The character of the rehabilitation diet is important also, but unless calories are abundant, then extra proteins, vitamins and minerals are of little value. So that's pretty interesting, right? They're saying that you want to be doing 4,000 calories after you've been starving yourself. But I think we do this naturally. Like my bin, I would yo-yo like starve binge, starve binge. I didn't even know I was starvating myself. I thought I was doing a raw food diet. I didn't have it in my mind to count the calories. I thought, oh, I'm eating salads and greens now and a few avocados uh, and then I'd be binge eating on junk. In other words, they weren't really overeating. It was a biological normal effect of hunger and weight loss. The men regained their original weight plus 10%. So I think this is what people refer to when they gain initial weight back on the raw till four or 80, 10, 10 diet. The men regained their original weight plus 10%. The regained weight was disproportionately fat and their lean body mass recovered much more slowly. I don't know what diets they would put back on, but anyway, there you go. With unlimited food and unrestricted eating, their weights plateaued, right, so they reached a the maximum. Finally, about nine months later, most had naturally returned to their initial weight without trying. So everything settled out without any further intervention. I suspect that further intervention, like more dieting, makes that, makes the, I'm just thinking this live now, extends that m nine months into the future where it cannot be reached unless you actually eat. Unless you actually forget about weight loss and eat, you're always delaying that nine months. 